I've got a bone to pick with you all. Also, I did a maths! Hello, we're back in office. So I'm back in the office on a Saturday. Uh, I just finished recording the last of the Crash Course videos because I've got all of my kit here. There's like a studio set up over there. I just spent like five minutes trying to do an extreme close-up of an M&M. &M. Um, I'm watching you. Always watching, Wazowski. If you want to know more about how M&Ms could possibly be the key to stopping global warming, then uh, you should check out my global warming, actually no, it's the geoengineering video in my crash course. Um, more about that later in the video. For now, let's do PhD watch. So you might remember last time that I was talking about the fact that my supervisor tore my theory to shreds um, in terms of what I was doing, and I was feeling reasonably okay with that because I felt like I had a good lead. And um, I had a few days in the wilderness, so to speak. I spent a lot of time with this textbook over here and it pointed me in the right direction. So basically, Oh, how am I going to explain this? So the Earth is rotating, you know, I hope that's not news to you. Um, the, earth, the Earth is spinning, right? And the, the atmosphere is like a fluid on top of it. In terms of the physics, fluids means like liquids, gases. They all obey the same physics. You can, still, you can use the same equations to describe them. And um, the equations that you use to describe them are really complicated. And then if you put those equations on a rotating sphere like the Earth, it just goes mental. It's it's horrible maths. So uh, meteorologists and whatnot who work in in using these equations on the Earth like simplifications and there's a massive massive simplification you can make called the geostrophic approximation. And what that basically means is you know how on um, weather forecasts you see pressure maps you know like you see areas of low pressure and high pressure and there are lines which which go everywhere called isobars which are lines of constant pressure. The geostrophic approximation is basically that wind will blow along isobars and you know that's a reasonable approximation. When it comes to large scale stuff like hurricanes and the polar vortex you can use that kind of approximation. So for stuff like I'm working on that's a good starting point. Basically what I've been doing um, over the past couple of days is assuming that that approximation is nearly right. Like, you basically write that the wind velocity at a given point is equal to that geostrophic velocity, so like the, ge the velocity assuming that it just goes along isobars, that plus a small extra factor. And then what you do is you take that expression for the velocity and put that into your equations of motion for, for fluid on a rotating sphere. And then you can get, depending on what you're looking for, you can get different results out. And basically what I did was, with some horrible, I don't know if you're actually going to be able to see that, but like some pretty, pretty dense algebra, um, I basically got to the point where I now have an expression for um, the rate of change of pressure over the polar cap, which is what I'm interested in, using this almost geostrophic approximation. It's called a quasi-geostrophic approximation, if you want to sound really wanky. And... I feel quite proud of that, so I'm going to take that to my supervisor in the coming week and have that torn apart and then start again. And then eventually we'll get somewhere. We'll get to somewhere where it's actually solid and you can hit it with an academic sledgehammer and it'll stay standing. But yeah, I might actually have something to present at the conference in San Francisco this December. So, yay! Right, now going back to what I said at the start of the video, I've got a bone to pick with you. I mean, we need to talk. There's something I want to talk to you about. And... His name is John Cena! It's not John Cena. I want to talk to you about the videos that are coming out on this channel at the moment. So as of the moment, this channel has about 22,000 subscribers, which I am incredibly proud of. It, it literally boggles my mind that that many people are interested in the stuff that I make. But as it turns out, they're not. Because when I put a vlog up like this, I anticipate that this will get a few thousand views within a couple of days. You know, the last vlog did that. Um, people are interested in watching those. I've been putting up uh, my crash course in atmospheric physics recently and that started out with a good number of views and that's been going down over time. I totally get that. I totally understand that people, it's not for everyone, it's not everyone's cup of tea, they're not necessarily interested in long-form educational content. If they are receiving the videos, basically I need to know, are you guys actually getting my videos in your sub box? Because either people aren't interested in the content which I'm putting out, which is fine, or they're not receiving it in the first place, and I need to know. So please do comment below if you're getting these videos. And if you are getting the videos and you're not interested, I want you to be really honest with me and tell me why you're not interested, because to me, it boggles my mind that 
I can put up a short video, like a five minute video on global warming. It's, you know, it's less than that, it's a three minute briefing on global warming. Everybody has three minutes and it is the most important issue in the world. I cannot think of a single thing which is as important as global warming. So for people to say that they're not interested in that, I just don't understand that point of view. So I want you to tell me why you're not interested if you're not. And, you know, please be brutally honest with me. And, you know, if this is a wake-up call for you and you didn't know that they were out there, please go and watch them because I think they're incredibly important. It's just quite disheartening, really, when you're putting out content that you, I literally put so much work into the stuff that's coming. I mean, there have been more videos coming out on this channel in the past month than, you know, appeared in an entire year before. I have put so much work into into this channel and the content which I'm passionate about. And it's, it is just a bit disheartening when people don't engage with it, people don't watch it. And also, if you do watch it, please don't comment on things that are unimportant, like what I look like or what I'm wearing, because frankly, I'm talking about the most important issue in the world and why are you interested in what top I'm wearing? Like, uh, sorry, I just need to get that out. I would like to take this opportunity though to say thank you to everybody who has been watching the videos and particularly to those people who have been supporting them on Conoz. Um, I've had some really generous donations. Thank you so much for people who have to donate it to me. I'm going to put that money towards a new green screen, a new tripod, because this old thing, this is like falling apart. So I need a new one. Um, you know, all the stuff that goes into the Connors page is going to go into trying to make my videos better, whether that's hardware or software. So thank you very much to people who have donated. I, I, I cannot tell you how appreciative I am that people think my content is important enough to actually m warrant like supporting by donating. And I'd like to appeal to everybody who's watching this video. I'm putting out videos at the moment about the COP21 meeting in Paris, uh, which is the global warming meeting basically in, in Paris this year. I've interviewed a whole bunch of different people from Exeter University, and these people are world leading academics. And this is one of the most important meetings in the history of global warming. I almost said the world then, but like that's not too far of a stretch to say because this the, the, the Paris meetings if we can forge an agreement now, we are saving ourselves trillions of dollars of damage and potentially millions of lives down the line, you know, in terms of our descent. This, this could be one of the most important, like, key turning points in human history, and I think it's so important that people learn about it. Thank you to everybody who has been, and I'm sorry that this has been a really whiny vlog, but it's been a little bit disheartening when, like, all the work I've been putting in doesn't seem to be getting much traction, so... Sorry, sorry for whining. Thank you for watching this video. If you know people who would be interested in the global warming stuff that I'm putting out and the science and the crash course and all that kind of stuff, please please share those videos because, uh, because uh, you know, I want to do more of them in the future, but I don't feel like I can if they're not getting a, a good response. If people aren't paying attention or if people don't think they're good, then I won't do any more. So please do share them to people you think might be interested. Thank you for watching. There's going to be more videos about COP and global warming coming out soon. And then the vlogs from America and the Durrell videos for Project for Awesome. Stay tuned. Next vlog, I'll talk more about Project for Awesome because that's really, really important. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and peace. And, oh, God, I feel like KSI. Oh. Okay, so here's my workbook. It's important because it's a book and I like books and it's got the work in. That's my laptop, which has got the scripts for the Crash Course videos in. That's my Japanese piece, Lily. Always important to keep that around because it keeps the air oxygenated. This is not the time to introduce science. It's an interesting thing, but I sort of believe it. You know, when you're in a negotiation, say you're buying a t-shirt at a market store,